Hi, my name is Kimberly and welcome back to my channel. It's only homeschooling. I'm a licensed professional counselor and a former middle school guidance counselor turned homeschool mom and of one. Today I am talking with you about things that I have learned from our years in occupational and physical therapy. Lessons from our OT and PT therapy crew. So far I have talked about I'm being an advocate and communication. Today I'm going to talk with you about the importance of doing your therapy homework. If you like this video, please be sure to click the like button below and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. This lets YouTube know that you like this kind of content and it will let the algorithm know that you want to see more content like it. So I was actually inspired to make this video by a friend and fellow homeschool mom, um, Leilani Melendez of Living With Eve. I'm gonna put a card up here showing you the video that she made talking about what she learned from her child's physical therapist. So I thought I would share with you some of the things that I have learned from my child's experience through OT and PT over the past seven years. Okay, so number four, do your homework. Therapy can help, absolutely it can help. Intervention is, is key in helping your child reach milestones where they might need a little bit of help if they are developmentally delayed. But that's one time a week, if you're lucky to go one time a week, or if you go to multiple therapies several times a week. Still, that's anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes for a session, versus you do the simple math of how much more time your child spends with you, then if you want your child to reach those goals and for that behavior to get into muscle memory and your child to establish those new healthy habits, you're going to have to do your homework at home. If your therapist doesn't give you homework, ask for some. It can only help your child progress. So make sure, even, even if your child is kind of like mine, who would kind of fight me on some of the homework, and you know, when I say fight me, it's more of, oh, I don't want to do my exercises, or you know, or anything like that, um, do it anyway. Make it fun. You can make it into a game. If I've learned anything from our therapy crew, it's that you can make your sensory diet, which is that's what a lot of the physical and occupational therapy exercises are, is a sensory diet. You can make those fun. Get in there and engage your child. Try not to make it, um, oh, well, we've got to do this today. You absolutely must. No, get in there and find ways to make it fun. In fact, one of my favorite resources for helping make your sensory diet activities fun, um, and a sensory diet is just a diet that you put your, your child on, not doesn't have anything to do with food whatsoever. It just has to do with exercises that you do on a regular basis um, that help improve your child's proprioceptive um, abilities, which is your basically your awareness or position of where your body is in space. I call it kind of like playing the hokey pokey. You know, you put your right arm in, you put your right arm out. Well, a child who struggles with with proprioceptive issues and may not necessarily know where their arm is or have trouble finding it or okay wait where's my right from my left um, they really struggle with playing the hokey pokey because by the time you've moved on to your left leg in they're still over here trying to find their right arm because it has to do with the, the brain and the body talking to one another um, it's Part of one of our um, several sensory systems and I'll put um, a, a link to a card to one of my videos up here which is what is sensory processing disorder from our got a minute got a minute nuggets of knowledge series if you want to learn more about that but it also helps with vestibular input and vestibular is one of the sensory systems that's the first to develop um, when we're born it develops in the womb and it has to do with all the other sensory systems develop around it um, your sight taste touch everything develops all around it and it has to do with your sense of balance balance and coordination. But one of my favorite, favorite tools that I use is the Out of Sync Child Has Fun. And it shows all different types of activities that you can do to help your child with sensory processing struggles um, improve. So yes, we did have progress from attending therapy, but I noticed that when we worked harder on those exercises at home, we had progress faster and we met those goals faster. Definitely do your homework. If your child is also, as your child gets older, and if your child is resistant to doing their homework, sit down with them and have a discussion with them about what their goals are, what's important to them. I was talking earlier about my child learning to ride a bike. He wanted to learn a bike. His, the neighborhood kids were all learning how to ride a bike, and they would come over with their bikes wanting to play, 
and he would go out and not take his bike out. His excuse initially for a while was, well, I've outgrown it and it doesn't fit me anymore. Well, granted, that was true, but we also told him that we would not buy him a new bike until he started doing some more of his regular exercises. So we gave him the motivation and the choice for the goal if he wanted to do it. He really wanted to learn that bike and even when it was hard, we still had to remind him of his goals and keep him motivated. Give your child a goal, a, a, a goal. help them discover what's important to them. That gives you buy-in and it gives them the opportunity to more likely be engaged with the work, even if it's something they really don't want to do. And don't forget to look out for these videos coming up in the rest of our vlog series on lessons and wisdom I have learned from our OTPT crew.